Hello everyone, in this video I am going to explain you the difference between GDBC, GPA, Hibernate and Spring Data GPA. Most Java programs use databases to store the data for further processing. It's a common fact. You know, more, you, you can't just write a complex program without store some information in the database. There is no one way to connect your Java program to the database. Uh, you have Java program on the one side and you have relational database on the other side. So let's just uh, check this magic which happens when you connect Java and database and let's uh, just get the overview of the tools which can help you to do this. Uh, the first one and the simplest uh, solution to connect your Java to the database, just use GDBC. GDBC is G Java Database Connectivity, is a part of Java, which was released by Sun Microsystems in 1997. Since, uh, since then it has been a part of Java Platform or Standard Edition. And packages, uh, the GDBC classes are contained in the Java package, uh, Java SQL and Java SQL. Uh, there are classes for connection uh, to the database and uh, executing some queries with your database. GDBC connections support creating executing statements. This may be update statements such as SQL create, insert, update, delete. And it also uh, supports the query statements uh, like select, uh, with joining, with where close, etc. Additionally, store procedures may be invoked through the GDBC connection. GDBC represents statements using one of the following classes. Statement, prepare statement, and callable statement. You can, sh you may see this uh, usage of GDBC in the old projects. Maybe you just tried uh, to use it by yourself. It's when you create a result set and grab the connection and execute a query connection and execute prepared statements. That's all about JDBC. We can say that JDBC is like a bridge between the Java world and the database world. The only disadvantages with JDBC is that you can often have some crappy code where lots of mapping between data sets and object occur. Logic is mixed with SQL. So that's when the GPA comes in handy. Java Persistence API is a specification which allows you to map between objects in code and database tables. This, uh, this specification can hide the SQL from the developers so that all the deal we, uh, all the all the they deal are Java classes and the provider allows you to save them and load them. In JDBC, you need to expose all details needed for crude operations, such like table name, column name, while in GPA, which is using JDBC underneath, you can also specify those details using Java annotations. Remember when we just annotate our class with table, entity, column, our fields with column, we use the GPA, Javax Persistence API. And by itself, um, Java APA is useless without the ORM provider, you know? Uh, so you just annotated your classes with proper annotations and that's it. You can just uh, execute some queries, you can just uh, prepare some statements, etc. Uh, by itself, GPA is not a tool or framework. Rather, it defines a set of concepts that can be implemented by another tool or framework. So, GP is just a specification and you need a tool to implement it. That tool can be like Hibernate, but beside the Hibernate, there are a lot of other tools like MyBatis, Apache Common, Vutils, Kayen, um, etc. Uh, while the Hibernate is the most popular one, I left my choice on Hibernate's explanation. But the same concept uh, is the other ORM implementation tools, you know. 
You can think of GP as the interface, uh, while Hibernate is the implementation of this interface. On this slide, GP and Hibernate uh, actually should be on the same level, to be clear, but I decided to put it on, on the top of GP. Hibernate is quite a big and widespread tool for working with databases. It also adds you some uh, HQL, Hibernate Query Language, which, you, uh, which allows you to write database statements against data objects without much knowledge of SQL. Hibernate Query Language is the object-oriented ver version of SQL. And what is about uh, Spring Data GPI? And Spring Data GPI is, is a part of the Spring framework. The goal of Spring Data is to reduce the amount of boilerplate code required to implement data access layers for various databases. Spring Data GPI is a library that adds an extra layer of abstraction on the top of your GPA provider, uh, like Hibernate. By default, uh, Spring Data GPA uses Hibernate as default ORM provider. Actually, you can change this in the settings if, if you want to. You can use any other ORM implementation with Spring Data GPA. And if you use Spring Boot along with Spring Data GPA, you have all the required connection settings out of the box. The only thing you need, just specify the host of your database, user and password to access a database. Spring Boot enables auto configuration for you and you don't need to create additional classes for connection pool and connection properties. With Spring Data GPA, you just create an interface which extends GPI repository or CRUD repository, and you just have all the CRUD methods like save, update, delete, select out of the box. Additional methods you can write just by writing methods uh, this with a specific name for query or use query annotation to write native or, or hibernate query. All the implementation Spring Data GPA does instead of you. So, um, the fastest approach, uh, as you can see, is JDBC because it's the, the lowest level of Java program and relational database. It doesn't have uh, any, uh, any levels on top of it. So if you use Java program and JDBC, yeah, you can just uh, have the really quick uh, statement execution uh, in your program. But it just adds some complexity and it just adds some a lot of boilerplate code uh, in your Java program. You can use a GPA and, for example, Hibernate to reduce uh, the amount of boilerplate code and to enable mapping, uh, to show the mapping between your Java program and database table. And Spring Data GPA is the top level and you can use it just to avoid uh, boilerplate code from Hibernate, just to hide all the implementations uh, working with database and just to focus on the level of tasks for business instead of thinking how to deal with the database and etc. So guys, that's it for today. I hope you just understand for now What's the difference between all those technologies and all those keywords? And now um, you can use whatever technologies uh, you think suits uh, the best for your project.